أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم سورة المنافقون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله والله يعلم إنك لرسوله والله يشهد إن المنافقين لكاسبون اتخذوا أمانهم جنة فصدوا عن سبيل الله إنهم ساما كانوا يعملون ذلك بأنهم آمنوا ثم كفروا فطبع على قلوبهم فهم لا يفقهون صدق الله العظيم Now as I told you last night the subject of nifaq and the characteristics of munafiqeen their behavior, their attitude this is a subject which has been discussed in very long details in Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Muhammad, also Surah Al-Imran. But you know here, in 11 ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a summary, essence of all that discussion. But first of all we must understand, there is a very big misunderstanding about munafiqeen or nifaq. People usually think that munafiqeen are those who know that they are munafiq. They are intentionally munafiq. This is wrong. There could be and there can be and there were, there are examples in the Quran, intentional munafiqeen also, who entered the fold of Islam only as spies, or for some subversion. They knew they never accepted Islam. So we have the example in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 72. وَقَالَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَجْهَ النَّهَارِ وَكْفَرُوا لَآخِرَهُ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Some Jews, you know, they hash this conspiracy that some of us should declare that we accept Islam in the morning. Then stay with the Prophet for the whole day. Then in the evening you declare, we have seen from very close quarters, he is nothing. So we are going back. We are going back from this Islam into our former religion. So maybe that some of the Muslims also then start thinking, okay, they were big people, very important people, and they came and they were very sincere. And how close they remained the whole day with the Prophet ﷺ. They must have seen something on which, you know, they have decided to go back. So that was one of their plots. So for them in Surah Al-Ma'idah we have the wordings, وَقَدْ دَخَلُوا بِالْكُفْرِ وَهُمْ قَدْ خَرَجُوا بِهِ They entered Islam with Kufr. And they went out with Kufr. Not a single moment came on them when they were real Muslims or real moments, not a single moment. But this is a special case. Maybe even today, some Christians, some Jews, some Hindus may say that they have, they have become Muslims and they come to some Muslim country for spying or for some subversive, subversive activities, some terrorist activities, just possible. So they will be intentional monafiq. But mostly the this disease which has been discussed in the Quran is of the unintentional munafiqeen who accepted Islam and they thought that this is good. It appealed to their minds and hearts. But when there was a call for sacrifice, now spend for the cause of Allah or now go to the war for the cause of Allah, now they, they had a second thought. 
First of all, they tried to make lame excuses. Oh, no, 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 I don't have that much. I can't spare anything. Oh, my wife is sick. I can't go for the battle, etc., etc. This is the beginning of a disease. Then when they saw that people laugh when we make excuses, then they started, Oh my God, what I am saying it is correct. You must believe me. Actually, I have this, you know, ulcer. I can't go. And the third stage is when they become enemies of Allah. Because, now these Muslims, you know, because they were responding positively to every call of the Prophet. Whatever he said, they were said, the back, we are present. So now, this attitude of the Muslims became unbearable for them. So enmity started for the Muslims, and especially for the leaders of the Muslims, that is Muhammad sallallahu It is because of him that we are put to these tests every day. So this is the gradual evolution of that disease. What's the real cause? Love of this world. Love of wealth. This is the cause. They want that we should be Muslims and we should be having the salvation in the hereafter, but to sacrifice that is a different issue. This we had in Surah Al-Hajj. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ لَا حَرْفٍ فَإِنَ سَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اِتْمَانَّ بِهِ وَإِنَ سَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ اِنْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجِهِ خَطِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ and again we had in Suratul Ankabut, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا أُوزِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَزَابِ اللَّهِ So this is the disease, and that is the real cause. And then this disease progresses, and it takes the form of enmity of the Muslims. And then, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in the second section of this surah, which is very small, three ayat, the treatment. What is the remedy of this disease? Iza jaakal munafiqoon, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the hypocrites come to you, talu and they say, Nashhadu inna ka la rasulullah. We testify, we bear testimony to the fact that you are the messenger of Allah. Wallahu ya'lamu inna ka la rasulullah. Allah knows it very well that you are his messenger. Who knows it better than Allah, that you are his messenger? But, وَاللَّهُ يَشْحَرُوا إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَقَاذِبُونَ Allah testifies that these munafiqs, these hypocrites, they are telling a lie. They are telling a truth. Whatever they are saying is a truth. But they are liars. Because they actually don't believe. The belief of his messengerhood has gone away from their hearts. It did come to them. But then, when they started going back, stepping back, step by right, step, that belief had gone. Just as we had in Suratul Hadid, Bala, yes, you were with us in the world. Bala kinnakum fatantum anfusakum wa tarabbastum wa rtabtum wa gharratkum ulamani ya uttaja abrullah wa gharrakum billah ilgharur. Fal yawma la yukhadu binkum fidyatum wa la min al-lazina kafaru. Ba'wakum unnar hiya maulakum wa besa al-masir. So gradually one comes to that level. اِتَّخَذُوا اَمَانَهُمْ جُنَّةً فَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They have taken their oaths as shields. By God, I am not feeling well, I can't go with you. By God, my wife is on the deathbed. How can I accompany you? So they have taken their these oaths to be shields. فَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So they remain exempted from the jihad fi سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ here means what? The way of Allah, the jihad in the way of Allah. Now this is actually the sequence of these surahs. Surah Saf, jihad essential. And if you shun jihad, if you want to escape, then it is nifaq. So that is the sequence, logical, rational. اتَّقَدُوا اَمَانَهُمْ جُنَّةً فَصَبْدُوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُمْ سَا مَا كَانُوا يَعْبَلُونَ Surely, evil is that what they have been doing. Zalika biannahum. Now this is the point which I have clarified already. Zalika biannahum amanu. They did come to believe. They entered Islam. Not dishonestly. Not to deceive. Summa kafaru. But then they disbelieved. They went back. 
but not openly, remained within the pale of Islam, legal Islam. But from Iman, they have gone out. They had Iman, but due to this weakness in their characters, they don't want to sacrifice. Therefore, they step back and back and back, so that they are out of the fold of Iman, but not of Islam. They remain Muslim, because Munafits, hypocrites, they are Muslims, legal Muslims. Zalika amanu summa kafaru. Then they disbelieved. And then the seal was put on their hearts, and now they don't have any understanding. And, O Prophet, when you see them, their bodies please you. And when they say something, you listen attentively to them. They are like propped up beams of timber. They have nothing in them. They think that every shout is against them. They are the real enemies. These Kufar of Makkah, they are open enemies. These are hidden enemies. They have to come from 300 miles to attack. And they are there in Medina, living side by side you with you. Humuladu fazarhum. So, beware of them. Qatalahum Allah. May Allah destroy them. Anna yufakun. From where they are being deviated. Waizaqilalahum ta'ala wa yastaghfir lakum Rasulullah. And when it is said to them, come on, come go to the Messenger of Allah, He will ask the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. Lawwaw ruusahum. They twist their heads. No, no, no. And you see them turning away. They don't want to come to you. They want, don't want to face you. They are arrogant. Why should we go? We have done nothing wrong. I was handicapped. I was sick. If I didn't go, I am not to blame. Why should I go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to apologize? I have done nothing. Now this ayah, which we have already read in Surah Al-Tawbah, in more severer form. It's equal to them, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether you ask the forgiveness of Allah for them or you don't ask. Allah is not going to forgive them in any way. Inna Allah la yahdil qabul fasiqeen. Verily Allah doesn't forcibly guide these transgressors. Humulladina now, two things, very ugly things that Abdullah Ibn Ubay said. And this was an incident. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims were coming back from the battle of Banil Mustariq. And they were halting somewhere. And there at a well, there was some conflict between a Muhajir and a, an Ansari. It flared. And Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of these Munafiqeen, he said at that time, number one, O oh people of Medina, you have supported these peoples, these poor hungry people who had come, fled from their homes, you supported them. And now they have come to this level that they challenge you. It's just like the same thing as we say in Arabic. Some in Kalbak, Ya Kuluk. You feed your dog. When it is strong enough, it will bite you. Now they are biting us. It's due to our support that they are here. And if we withdraw our support, they will go away. This Iman and this and Jihad, they will forget everything. And then he said, if we return to Medina, the honorable people, the people, the sons of the soil of Medina, they will definitely expel these Muhajirin from Medina, who are very weak and mean people. Now these words were reported to the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah ibn Ubay has said this. When the Prophet called him, and asked for an explanation, he said, I didn't say. 
flat reply. But here Allah confirms that they, he did say this. هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ لَا تُنْفِقُوا عَلَى مَنْ إِنَّ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْفَضُوا It is they who say that don't expend on those who are with Allah's messenger. Until they disperse, they will go away. وَلِلَّهِ خَزَائِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْنَرْضِ But for Allah, and to Allah belong the treasures of all the heavens and the earth. وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْتَهُونَ But these hypocrites, they don't understand it. It's the shortcoming of their understanding. يَقُولُونَ لَا يَدَلَعَدَ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَا يَخْرِجَنَّ الْعَزُّ مِنْ هَلَا زَلِّ And they are saying, if we return to Al-Madina, the mightier ones of us will expel the weaker ones. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ While the real honor and might is belongs to Allah and His Messenger and the believers, وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But these hypocrites don't know. So it can go to this level. This disease of nifaq starts from where? Weakness of character. Not ready to sacrifice for the sake of truth. Stepping back. This is the basic diagnosis. But then steps. Lame excuses. Then, you know, taking oaths, wrong oaths, then becoming a sort of enemy to the Muslims, to the true movements. When this disease reaches this stage, now it is, it cannot be cured, incurable. And at that stage, even the prophets asking for forgiveness for them is not granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the prognosis of the disease. Now, Treatment on the treatment side, we know there is one preventive treatment. The other is the curative treatment. Preventive treatment is, Ya ayu allazina amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an zikrillah. Wa man yafal zalika fa hulaika humul khasirun. O you who believe, let not your rishis or your children divert you or hinder you from the remembrance of Allah. Overindulgence in worldly affairs, in riches, in trade, in children, Overindulgence, which makes you forget Allah. This is the basic cause. If you keep remembrance of Allah in your mind and heart all the time, this is the prevention of this disease. Then the faq will not be able to enter your heart. If there is Allah in your heart, how can the faq enter? But when the Allah is not there in your heart, now... As they say in Persian, Khana e Khalira Deumi Girat. If the house is vacant, well, the jinns come and occupy it. If the heart, your heart is vacant from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Nifaq would come. Then Shaitan comes, Satan comes, and he whispers, blows into it. So the preventive treatment is keep remembering Allah at all times. In every condition, standing, sitting, on your sides, never forget Allah. This is the prevention. Whosoever does this, that he forgets Allah due to this occupation in this world, then they are the losers. Now, what is the curative treatment? If you know this infection, you have it, then the cure for nifaq is infaq. What is infaq? Spend. Spend the way of Allah. Spend. And we had in Surah Al-Hadid these two words. Aminu billahi wa rasulayhi wa anfiqu min marat ja'alakum mustakhla fi nafi. So because the real cause is love of this world. And the biggest manifestation of the love of this world is the love of wealth. Give this wealth away. Give this wealth away. Inna al-musaddaqina wa al-musaddaqati wa akradu Allah tarzal hasana. This is the way in which you know if some infection has already taken place, it will be cleared. This is the remedy for it. This is the curative treatment. And expend from whatever we have given you. Until before that time that some of you finds this death before him. And then he will say, 
رب لولا خرتنی لاجن قریب فصدق و کبن صالحین سی دو مائی لارڈ وڈس ناؤ ناٹ ریسپائٹ می تو اے نیئر ٹرم پلیز ڈیفر ایٹ فر سم ٹائم سو دیٹ آئی وڈ گیو آرمز ایوری تھنگ آئی ول گیو ان یور وے ان چیریٹی اینڈ آئی ول بیکم اے ویری رائٹس پرسن و لن یو اخر اللہ نفسا ندا جا جلوہا And take it for granted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never defer the time of death of any person. When that fixed time comes for him, the death is to come. Wallahu khabiru mima ta'amaloon. Allah very well knows what you are doing. Now this is the pair Surat al-Munafiqoon and Surat al-Taghabun. And Surat al-Taghabun is the most comprehensive surah of Quran regarding Iman. Iman actually is the subject matter of the Makki Surahs. But here in 18 ayat, what is Iman? First the three main articles of faith, then a passionate call to have Iman. Then what are the fruits of this tree of Iman? So that you can see whether you have Iman or not. And then Again, a passionate appeal to fulfill the requirements of Iman. So, four parts of this surah. Two things, Iman and a call for Iman in the first section. What are the fruits of Iman? And what are the responsibilities of Iman? They are the subject of the second section. But here you must understand, one Iman is against, opposed to kufr. One Iman is opposed to nifaq. Kufr, you know, have two, two stages. An open kufr, which is legally kufr, a person is legally out of the pale of Islam, that is a kafir, non-believer. And then this is also kufr, hidden kufr, that is nifaq. So here actually, the iman as opposed to nifaq has been discussed here. Because these surahs, as I told you in the very beginning, they are addressing the Muslims only. Among the Muslims, there are Muslims, true Mormons, the hypocrites, not kuffar, open kuffar are not there. So here it is in opposition to nifaq. So first nifaq was discussed, and now iman. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawat wa ma fi lard. Everything which is in the heavens and everything which is in the earth. glorifies and will continue glorifying forever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole mulk, we had twice in Surah Al-Hadid, Lahu mulku samawati wal lard. Twice. In the first six ayat. Here, Lahu mulk. To him belongs the kingdom or the sovereignty. Wa lahu alhamd. And also all praise belongs to him. Wa huwa ala kulli shayn qadir. And verily, he is powerful over everything. These four ayat, you know, the six ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. And that is the first among the musabbihat. <coughs> and among the musabbihat, this is the last. Six ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. And here are four ayat. He is the one who created you. Who create, created you all? Faminkum kafirun. Some of you are unbelievers. Faminkum mu'min. And some are the believers. How come? The unbelievers were also created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The logic would say that they should also believe in Him. But the actual state of affairs is that some of you believe, some of you don't believe. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. Whatsoever you are doing, Allah is seeing. Khalaqa samawati walanda bilhaq. He created the heavens and the earth with a purpose. Pasawwarakum. And He shaped you, fashioned you. Fahsama sawwarakum. How beautiful a shape He has given to you. Wa ilahi al-masir. And to Him will be the return. Ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa lars. Three dimensions of Allah's knowledge in one ayah. Number one, Ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa lars. He knows everything which is in the heavens and the earth. Number two, Wa ya'lamu ma tu sirruna wa ma tu lenoon. 
and he knows what you conceal and what you reveal. And number three, وَهُوَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ He knows whatever is in the hearts and chests. Now what is the difference between number two and number three? Whatever you hide, you conceal, Allah knows, that is in your heart. Then why this repetition? I kept on thinking this on this issue for a long time. Then it was clear to me that this is a separate third dimension. And that is the dimension which we know, which we call subconscious mind. We don't know our subconscious mind. One thing is that I am consciously hiding something. I know it. That is in my knowledge. I am hiding it willfully, intentionally. But there is a level of my mind which I don't know even. And that is my subconscious mind. Allah knows your subconscious mind also. So He knows everything which is in the heaven and the earth. He knows what you conceal and hide and what you say openly. And He knows what is in the chest. Now these four ayats are discussing the person and attributes of Allah. Now, the institution of messengerhood. Alam yaatakum nabaw lazina kafaru min qawl. Have not the news of those who disbelieved in the past came to you? Now this is the Madani Surah. And in the Makki Surahs, all these news, Ambaw Rasul, the people of Hud and people of Nu and people of Saleh and people of Shweb, and the Sodom and Gomorrah townships and so on and so forth. And, and you know, Firaun and his armies. Alam yaatakum. Now here is the only question. It means that you have already come to know. Nabaw lazina kafaru min qabul. The news of those who disbelieved in the past. Fazaku abala amrehim. So they tasted the evil consequences of their conduct and behavior. Walahum azabun alim. That was in this world that they were destroyed. But a painful chastisement is there for them waiting in the hereafter. Zalika bayannahu. This happened because kana taatihim rosulhum bil bayyanat. To them their messengers kept on coming. Fakalu, but they kept on saying, ab basharu yadunana. Will a mortal human being guide us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, He should have sent some angel. Why a human being? Just like us. Fakafaru. On this basis, they disbelieved. Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also turned away. Because He was in no need of them. Wallahu aliyyul hamid. And Allah is self-sufficient. He has no need with anybody. And He is praiseworthy. These two ayat. The biggest hindrance in the way of people to accept the messengers has been this. That if they are messengers of Allah, how could it be that they are men? They should have been angels. They denied the messengerhood on the basis of the human character of those messengers. But later on this disease has appeared among the followers of the messengers of Allah that they deny that the messenger is not Bashar. He is something else. How can a messenger be a Bashar, a human being? So this is the same disease taking the about turn, you know. In that condition, they deny that because they are Bashar, they cannot be messengers. And who has accepted as messengers, they say because they are messenger of Allah, they can't be Bashar. So it's the same disease. Now the third article of faith, and that is of resurrection. Those who disbelieve assert that they will not be raised again. Now note the words, the emphasis. Pull, say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bala, why not? What of me, and I swear by my Lord, you will definitely be raised again. And then you will be told what you had been doing. And this is very easy on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in seven ayat we have four for the attributes of Allah. Two for the institution of messengerhood. One but very forceful one for the iman bil akhirah of the resurrection. Now comes a call. 
فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ These are the facts. Whether you accept them or you deny them, the fact will remain as it is. Allah is there. This institution of Mishamut Messenger would have been there. And the resurrection, resurrection is going to take you. But if you want success for yourself, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Have faith and iman and belief in Allah and His Messenger. وَالنُورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا And also have belief in the light that He has sent down. That is Quran. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ And whatever you are doing, Allah is aware of it. يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُكُمْ لِيَوْمِ الْجَمْعِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ التَّغَابُونَ The day when He will gather you all on the day of gathering. That would be the day of the decision of success or failure. Tagabun. The decision as to who failed, who succeeded. That they will decide. You might have been an emperor in this world. But if you are thrown in the hell, you have failed. You are doomed. You might have been a very poor person in this world. But if you are saved on the day of judgment and admitted to the gardens of paradise, you are successful. Success doesn't depend upon these worldly belongings, gains, positions, wealth, nothing of the sort. Success. Whosoever succeeds on that day is successful. Whosoever has failed on that day is the failure. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ التَّغَابٌ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ now this is the explanation of that taghabun. Whosoever will have faith in Allah, vayamal salihan, and do good deeds, yukafir anhu sayyatihi. Allah will expunge from his record his shortcomings. Vayudhilhu jannat in tajri min taat al-anhar, and will make them enter the garden under which rivers will be flowing. Khalidina fiha abada, to abide therein forever, forever. This is the biggest success. On the other hand, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who disbelieved and belied our revelations, أُرَائِكْ أَسْحَابُ النَّارِ They are the dwellers of the fire. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will remain in that forever. وَبِيسَ الْمَصِيرِ And definitely it's a very evil destination. Here the first section ends. Seven ayat, a narration, four for Allah's attributes, two, the basic mistake committed by human beings regarding the messengers of Allah, one ayah for the direction. Then in three ayat, a passionate call, have belief in these things. Now what is the result? If you have true faith and true iman in you, what conditions should be there? In your feelings, in your actions, deeds. So five cardinal effects. Number one. مَا سَعَبَ مِن مُسِيبَةٍ لَا بَيْزْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمٍ If you really believe in Allah, then it must be very clear to you that no calamity befalls you Except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatsoever comes to you. Nothing can come to you without the permission and leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whosoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart to patience and remain pleased and contented with, the, with whatever Allah decides for him. This is what we call in Urdu, Razi Barazai Rabb. Whatever you have decided me, I welcome it. Maybe it is unpleasant. Maybe it is painful to me for the time being. But I know it's coming from you, O oh my Lord. You are my friend. You are my protector. You are my supporter. I have trust in you. I have faith in you. So whatever comes from you, I am accepting it. This is Razi Baradaya Rabb. غزائے حق پہ راضی رہی حرف عرضو کیسا خدا خالق خدا مالک خدا کا حکم تو کیسا 
Why should you desire something? Leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he decides will be the best. Razi barazai rab. This is called maqam raza The station of raza Always keeping pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Radhi Allah anhum wa radhu an. Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No complaint, no complaint. Oh Allah, why you have done this to me? Oh Allah, why this has happened? Oh, nothing of this sort. It tells that you don't have faith in Him. You don't trust Him. Number one. Number two, this is an inward feeling. Whatever comes to you, howsoever painful it might appear to you, howsoever unpleasant it might appear to you, take it and take it with total surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, whatever is from you, it's acceptable to me without any complaint. Now the second is outward expression of this iman. وَاتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَاتِيُوا رَسُولِ now obey Allah and His Messenger. Whatsoever is coming to you, you think it is coming from Allah. Whatsoever comes out of you, it should be according to the obedience of the law of Allah. Your hands shouldn't do anything which is not permissible. Your legs shouldn't take you anywhere where Allah doesn't like you to go. Your eyes shouldn't see anything which Allah doesn't like you to see. Your whole existence and everything which is coming out of you, these actions, these deeds, out of your, these organs, they all should be dictated by the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atiyu la wa atiyu rasul. Fain tawallaytum fain nama ala rasul al balagul mubin. And if you turn away, then let it be known to you that on our messenger there is no responsibility except that he has to convey to you our message. After that you are responsible. He is not responsible. Number three, tawakkul. Have trust in Allah. Not in the material means, no. although we use the material means, but don't trust them. Don't think anything can be done through these material means. It will happen only if Allah likes it, if He permits it. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah is the one except whom there is no God. So Allah should put the whole trust those who believe, not on the means, not on your money, not on your own intelligence. Well, use all these things as best as you can. But don't put your trust in it. Now, every human being has these two aspects. Something is coming to him. For that first ayah. Ba asaba bi musibatin illa bejdillah. Woman yumin billah ya de kalba. Something coming out of him. Actions, deeds. They should be in the form of obedience to Allah and His Messenger. And about that, total trust should be on Allah, not on the means. Now, every human being is a social being. So there are relationships. He is tied to other human beings with relations. And the most important relations, most dear, are the spouses and the children. Now, what should be the attitude of a truly believing woman? Ya yallazina amanu, inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwwal lakum fahzaru. Oh, you believe, verily from among your wives and your children, there are enemies against you. Fahzaruhum, beware of them. Why? This love is a potential danger. Maybe due to this love, you indulge in something which is haram. To get better education for your children, you are adopting haram means of earning. What can I do? 
are to pay these fees and this permissible means they are not sufficient. So what is this having there? Then they are your enemies. You are being doomed due to this love. This is the potential love which challenges the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless you guard, you stand at guard, take the precautions, always conscious of it. Beware, there's a danger, potential danger here. This natural love can take you to the wrong path. So guard yourself. Inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwa lakum fazaru. But the family life should not be like this, that you are always angry with your people, your family, always, you know, quarreling with them. No. The attitude should be, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَهُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا If you keep on pardoning them, overlooking their shortcomings and forgiving them, surely, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah is also forgiving and merciful. Save yourself, but not be harsh to them. Extra harshness breeds rebellion. Leniently, with wisdom, try to take them on the right path, not with harshness. But save yourself. Don't let their love take you any wrong step. There you have to save yourselves. Pu anfusakum. Save your, yourselves. But for them, love, affection, leniency, this should be your behavior. Innama amwalukum wa auladum fitna. Verily, your riches, belongings, and your children are a trial for you. Allah is trying you on these. Whether you love these things more or you love me more. Whether you love your children more or you love me more. Whether you disobey me due to the love of your children and wives. Whether you disobey me due to the love of the wealth. So it's fitna. Wallahu indahu wa azim. And the great reward is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will reward. Not your children can reward you. What reward will, you, will they give you? Allah will give you the reward. Now to conclude, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ So number one, have fear and regard of Allah as much as you can. Number two, وَسْمَعُوا عَتِيُوا Discipline, listen and obey. Now listen and obey whom? Listening and obeying to Allah and His Messenger has already been mentioned. وَاتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَاتِيُوا رَسُولُ By this repetition. This is for that party discipline. Hezbollah. You have to live as a party. And party cannot be effective unless there is discipline. You have to obey Muhammad and also the Amir appointed by Muhammad. Because an organization, a party, you don't have one Amir only. Whenever then there was a battle. You know, the commander-in-chief was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But on the right wing, there was some other commander. On the left wing, there was some other commander. So, these commanders are to be obeyed. Because they have been appointed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happened in Uhud? A disobedience of the commander, local commander, 35 Muslims, they disobeyed. And the punishment that came, you know, cost 70 lives to Muslims, including the lives of Hamza radiallahu an and Musa bin Umair radiallahu an. And that was a, only a matter of disobedience. That's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. Whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. Whosoever obeys my Amir, appointed by me, whosoever, so he actually is obeying me. 
وَمَنْ عَطَا أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ وَمَنْ عَصَا أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ عَصَا مِي And whosoever disobeys the Amir appointed by me, he actually disobeys me. So this discipline has to go. Now remember, you know, yesterday, the three surahs, rather four, all the four, from starting from Surah Al-Hadid, then in Mujadila, Muhadda, Hadid, mention of Hadid, weapons, in Surah Al-Hadid, Muhadda, between the party of Allah and the party of Shaitan, Hezbollah, Hezbollah, Shaitan. Then, the same subject in Surah Al-Hashr, again the same subject in Surah Al-Muntahir. Here for the first, for last time, Pasma'u wa'atiyu, listen and obey, discipline. Number three, wa'anfiqu, spend as much as, as much as, as much as you can. Khairan li'anfusikum, this is better for you. The more you spend for Allah here, the more you are going to get in the hereafter. You are spending for your own self, you are saving. It's the biggest saving bank of the hereafter where you are depositing your whatever you are spending in the way of Allah. وَمَنْ يُوْكَ شُحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And whosoever is saved from the avarice of his own soul, so those are the prosperous. إِن تُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضَ الْحَسَنَا Now for the last time here, in the beginning we had مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضَ الْحَسَنَا In Surah Hadith. Who is that who can give a goodly loan to Allah? Here again. إِن تُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضَ الْحَسَنَا if you give a goodly loan to Allah, He will multiply it for you manifold. In addition, He will forgive you. Allah is appreciating, forbearing. If you spend something for Him, He appreciates. If you are miser, miserly, you, you are acting, then He is forbearing. He doesn't punish you immediately. He gives you time. عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ The knower of the seen and the unseen. الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Again the two names. الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ He is all powerful. There are no limits on his authority. But he is all wise. Now the next pair of surahs and the last of these ten. These two surahs concern the family life of the Mu'mineen believers. And first of all, it must be noted that this family life and family laws are so important in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nothing has been discussed in the Qur'an in that much detail in which the family laws are given in the Qur'an. Full five sections of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then you have in Surah Ahzab, in Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Nur, family laws. Now regarding this family life, there can be two extremes. One extreme is that the husband and the wife, they are not going well with each other. There are some disputes. So the extreme will be talaq. But what are the rules of talaq? What are the etiquettes of talaq? This is the subject of Surah Al-Talaq. The other is extreme love. Love between the spouses is something which is required. It must be there. But to an extent. Not to the extent that it disturbs the boundaries of Allah's Sharia. So that extreme discussed in Surah Al-Tahreem. And both attach together here. And they become a very beautiful pair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iza talaqtum un-nisa, when you divorce your women. But here the address is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never divorced any wife. But actually the address is to the Muslims through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you divorce your women, your wives, فَتَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ This divorcing should be according to the prescribed timings. وَعَصُلِدَّهِ 
and then keep the count of the waiting period. After the divorce, there is a period in which that woman cannot marry anybody else. Waiting period, idda. Wattakullah, Rabbakum. And have fear of Allah, who is your Lord. La tukhriju hunna bin buyuti hunna. Don't expel them from their houses. During this waiting period, the wife should remain in the house of the husband, not go out. Wala yakhruina. And they themselves are also not allowed to go out. Illa yatina bi fahishatin mubayyana. Except the extreme condition that they might have committed some extreme indecency, and that is adultery. That is an exception. Atilka hududullah. These are the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wama yata'adda hududullah faqad zalama nafsa. And whosoever crosses over the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he has done wrong to himself. La Allah. لا تدري لا الله يهد سباد أمرك أمرا، and you know not that Allah may cause there after something new thing to take place. Maybe when during that iddat, that waiting period, the wife is in the same house. Maybe you feel inclined towards her. Maybe you take your talaq back. So let her be there. Not turn them out. Allah wants that when the marriage is there, its best is that it should continue. Only in extreme conditions, where you know they become absolutely incompatible, then there is separation. So if they remain close, maybe then the the, the conditions of the the feelings of a man can change. Faiza balagna ajala hunna, when they have completed their period, time period of waiting. فَأَمْ سَيْكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ فَارِقُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ So now either you keep them with you, you take your talaq back, but it should be in a respectable way. أَوْ فَارِقُوهُنَّ Or get separated بِمَعْرُوف But this should also be in a very respectable way. وَأَشْهِدُوا زَوَيْ عَدْلٍ مِّنْكُمْ And you call to witness two men of equity from among yourselves. Zal, baqi mu shahadat Allah, and set up the testimony for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Zalikum yu azu bihi man kana yu minu billahi wal yom al akhir. By that is exhorted he who believes in Allah in the last day. Wa man yatqillah yajallahu bakhraja. And whosoever has fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah will open a way out for him. Wa yarzuku min hasul ayah tazim, and he provides them. With sustenance from where he expects not. Wama yata wakkara Allah. And whosoever have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fahuwa hasbu. He is all sufficient for him. Inna Allah ba'alik wa amrihi. Verily Allah ta'ala attains his purpose. Fad ja'ala Allahu likulli shayin qadra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed a mayor for everything. Wallahi yaisna min al-mahiyyiz bin nisaikum. As for those women among you who have despaired of menstruation, who have entered the men who pass, no periods now coming. In irtabtum, if you are in doubt, fa'idda tuhunna salasa tu ashhurin. That their waiting period is three months. Wallahi lam yaisna. Also those, maybe the marriage was in a very young age and the girl was still not menstruating. وَلَيْنَمْ يَحِيْهُمْ For them also, three months. وَأُولَاتَ الْأَحْمَالِ As for those who are pregnant, أَجَلُهُنَّ يَذَعْنَ حَمْلَهُنَّ For them the waiting period is when they deliver their load or their burden. So, if one woman is divorced today and a month later she was pregnant and she delivers the child, now it's the finished. She can marry another man now. وَمَيَّتْ تَقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرَى And whosoever fears Allah, Allah Sa'ala will produce ease in his affairs. ذَلِكَ عَمْرُ اللَّهَ This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَنزَلَهُ إِلَيْكُمْ He has sent down 
on you. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّعَاتِهِ Whosoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expunge from his record his shortcomings. وَيُعْزِمْ لَهُ أَجْرَى And he will magnify for him his reward. أَسْكَنِهُنَّ مِنْ هَيْسُ سَكَلْتُمْ مِنْ وَجْدِ مِنْ وَجْدِكُمْ You lodge them during that waiting period where they have to stay at your house. Lodge them where you are lodging. Not that you are living in a big house and, you know, in a servant quarter you say, go there for this, this waiting period. No. Respectably. Bin vujdikum. According to your means. La tudarruhunna li tudayyiku alayhinna. And do not hurt them. And make life miserable for them so that they leave your home themselves. وَإِن كُنَّا أُولَاتِ حَمْلٍ And if they are pregnant, فَأَنْفِقُوا عَلَيْهِنَّا So, go on spending on them. حَتَّى يَزَعْنَا حَمْلَهُنَّا Till that time that they deliver their child. فَإِنْ أَرْضَعْنَا لَكُمْ If they are ready to settle for you, فَأَتُوهُنَّا وَجُرَهُنَّا In that case, you have to pay them the wages. وَأَتَمِرُوا بَيْنَكُمْ بِبَعْرُوفٍ And you should decide matters amongst you by mutual consultation, وَإِنْ تَعَصَرْتُمْ And if you have become very hard on each other, you can't agree, فَسَتُرْزُوا لَهُ أُخْرَى Then some other woman should suckle her, the child, not the mother. لَيُنْفِرْ زُو سَعَتِمْ مِنْ سَعَتِهِ Let the man of abundance expend out of his abundance. وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِنْ مَا عَتَاهُ اللَّهِ And whosoever, whose provision is restricted, let him spend out of what Allah has given him. لا يكلف الله نفسم إلا ما أتاها Allah does not hold any soul responsible save for what he has given it. سيجعل الله بعد أسر يسرا Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the ease after hardship. وَكَيِّ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ أَتَتَ نَمْرِ رَبِّهَا And how many a Townships have passed who revolted against the command of their Lord, Varusulihi, and his messengers. Fahasabnaha hisaban shadida. So we called it to a severe account. Vahasabnaha adaban nukra and chastised it with a horrible chastisement. Fazakat wabala amreha. So it tasted the mischief of its conduct and the end of its affair was Vakana akibat wamreha khusra. Loss and destruction. Abda Allahu lahum azaban. Shadeedan. Allah has prepared for them a severe torment and chastisement. Fattaku Allah ya awlil albaab. So fear Allah, O men of understanding. Allah zina amanu. That is those who believe. Qad anzal Allahu ilaykum zikra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed sent down to you a reminding and admonition. And what is that reminding and admonition? Rasoolan yaklu alaykum ayatillah. A messenger reciting unto you the illuminating revelations of Allah, ayatillahi mubayyinatin, li yukhij al-lazina amanu amil salihat, so that he should take out those who believe and do good deeds, minas zulumat il al-nur, take them out from the depths and shades of darkness into the light. Wa man yu'min billahi wa yamal salihan, whosoever believes in Allah and does good deeds, يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتِ تَرِدِ مِتَاتِ الْنَارِ He will make them enter those gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا They will remain in them, abide there forever, forever. قَدْ أَحْسَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ رِزْقَى Allah has made very good provision for him. اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ شَمَاوَاتِ Now this ayah is from amongst the ayat al-mutashabihat. We can't understand exact connotation of this ayah up till now. Allah is He who has created seven heavens and of the earth they are like. Seven earths. This is the literal translation. But what does it mean? We don't know. Up till, we, up till now we don't know. Maybe at some later stage this reality also appears. And it should appear. It shall appear, inshallah. يَتَنَزَلْ أَمْرُ بَيْنَهُنَّ Between them, among them, 
the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down. The kalamu and Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. So that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful over everything. Wa anna Allah qad ahata bi kulli shayin ilma. And that Allah has encompassed everything in his knowledge. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakeem. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.